All right guys, so welcome back to the shop here. Um, today I'm gonna be changing out the uh, Sprague clutch in my gearbox. So this is the front half of the gearbox off of my airplane. So I drained the fluid out, removed all the, the front case bolts, and then it pulls off. Um, when you get it home, or I brought it home so I had you know the tools and everything in a, in a cooler work environment to work on it. But basically what I need to do is remove this nut that's on here which is torqued on at 150 foot-pounds and thread locked. Um, once I remove that, I can take out the C-clip that's holding um, the inner gear in place and remove that and then take the clutch out. Um, the clutches, for reference, this is what a new clutch looks like. You discard these two case halves, but this is your clutch and it sets inside there. There is a lip on one side of it. The lip side goes down, so it's gonna go in like that. Um, so I'm gonna put in a new clutch, and it's not necessary to do that unless it locks up on you, except there are these little retainer clips. And we've talked to Teal about this a little bit. Um, I don't know what the final thought is on it, but these retaining clips, like this one here and here, there's four of them on here. I'm not sure the purpose um, but this is a, a clutch out of a, a turbo 400 transmission, I think. There's a reason that those clips are in there, but it's not really necessary for this application, although Teal does recommend leaving them in there. But what happened was I was uh, changing the oil on this and found a piece of one of those clips on my magnetic plug. So it was recommended not to run it with those particles possibly, or parts being in there. So I'm real curious, once I take it apart, I'll show you what part of it has um, come apart. I can actually see another piece of the clip. Uh, actually, let me get in here with the camera. You can see a piece of that clip right there. So the, one of those clips has come apart. So I wanna make sure that I um, replace this clutch, get all those parts out because if one of those pieces of the clip gets into one of the drive dogs on the Sprague clutch, um, it could lock it up. Um, now, that's not a huge big deal. Obviously, you don't want your clutch to, to lock up, but it's not a um, loss of power situation. If the clutch locks up, it's in the drive mode. It just won't freewheel when you go to shut it down, and it's hard on the, uh, basically, the starting process, and it's hard on the gearbox. But if it does fail and locks up, it locks up in an engaged uh, mode, basically, and it's not like you're gonna lose power in, in a fight. Um, it doesn't fail to the free spinning where you wouldn't get your power from your engine. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and take this apart. In order to get this nut off, I'm gonna have to heat it with a torch to about you know, 280 degrees or so to, to release the um, high strength Loctite. So I'll go ahead and do that real quick and then uh, I'm gonna use an impact wrench and I'll show you how I do that. All right, so you can see how I didn't have to secure the prop flange using that impact wrench um, and some heat got that, that main gear off of there. Um, so now I can see another piece of that actually has come free. It's right there. That's one of those clips. So that's the reason why I'm doing this is that clip came apart. All right, so before I take it out of here, what I'm going to do is go ahead and use the C-clamp tool because it's holding everything nice and sturdy. So I'm just going to go ahead and put this in place. Tilt that down so you guys can see. Okay, and then what you're doing is you're closing this tool up and dragging that clip together.
Okay, and come out now. There we go. So I'm going to take some of the pressure off of that real quick, just so it doesn't sit there tightening it the whole time I'm working on it. Okay, so now it's loose again. I'll set that aside. Um, so the clutch is free to come out now. To do that, well, there goes the shaft. It's nice and hot. So there's the main gear. I don't need to mess with anything with the case. I can pull the spacer washer up just to take a look at the bearing, make sure there's no parts in there, and I will give it a good look, make sure that none of that retaining clip got in that bearing. So I'll look at that after I uh, remove the clutch. But first I'll set this, oops, and that's how easy the shaft comes out. So I'll set this aside. Okay, so this is nice and hot. So what we're looking at now is an inner gear that's basically the inner race of the clutch and the outer gear. So I'm going to flip it over and see how this gear sits right in here. I'm just going to push down on that gear and it may take the clutch out with it, but I'm going to pop that gear out. So there's that, that inner gear. I'll take a good look at that, inspect that. You can already see some more particles from the clips in here. And then you can just lift the clutch out. If you can't lift the clutch out, you can turn it over and push on it down through these holes. And it will come out. Now there's a lip you can see in here on one side. See how this has a, a lip, lip on one side but it's not on the other? That lip goes in first. So it goes in like that. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at, I'm going to clean this off and I'm going to look at all these drive dogs. Oop, there's one of them falling out already. I'm not supposed to do that. Um, one of those drive, I'll look at all these drive dogs and see if there's any wear on them. I don't know if that went back in right or not. Either way, I'm going to replace this clutch. I wasn't expecting one of them to fall out, so I'm going to set it aside until I can see what, what's going on with that. So I'll start by cleaning it up, make sure there's no extra parts in here. I have another gearbox that is new that I took apart to look at the clutch just to see how this all worked. And it has zero mark, zero wear inside. So this one having 135 hours on it, um, I'm curious to see the difference in the wear. So we obviously on the inner race, we don't want to see any marks, any scoring, anything. Looks pretty good, except for these clips are all broken out in here, and I can see all of that debris in there. That is what is causing the problem. And I imagine that those are getting all ground up in there somewhere, so hopefully they didn't cause any damage to either of the races. But I will have to get all those out. So that's just the one spot there. Yeah, there's quite a bit of debris in there. So let's look at the clutch. See, there's one clip right there. There's another clip there, and one side of that clip's broken. I mean, see that it doesn't have that side of the clip on there. Another clip, and then this clip's completely gone. So two of the four clips are broken. And so that's what we're talking about in replacing the clip. You can remove these clips, all, re replacing the clutch, I can remove these clips all together so they don't um, cause that problem. Teal obviously doesn't recommend doing that because his test hours are all done with those clips in there. But I'm not the first one to have had this issue. Um, and I don't know if these are worn, and that's why these dogs are popping out, because on the new clutch, you can manipulate it quite a bit and you're not seeing those fall out at all. So here's a new clutch with the, with the clips. And you can see that those drive dogs do move around, but they don't fall out. 
It might just be the amount of wear on a clutch. You know, 200 hours, you should inspect this. So I'm a little early on it, but I'm early because I had the um, clip particles on my oil drain plug. So this clutch is no good. So that's 130 hours on the clutch and it's uh, showing that it's pretty worn out. It didn't lock up, but obviously the parts of the clutch are compromised. All right, so what I found was these clips are fairly well broken. Well, there are different stages of being broken, but I found tons of debris in there. Um, and then, it's not just the clips, but you can see how those dogs fall right out. There's a retention spring that goes on the inside, and it's broken as well. So you can see, I don't know if you can see it right there, but that allows these to fall out. And so, I don't know which one broke first. I know I was seeing the particles from these clips, um, and that's what we're going to remove. And then I'm going to run it without those clips, and then I'll kind of report back to Teal how it works out as far as whether I get the same life out of it without any issue. So I cleaned the inner or the outer race for the clutch. It looks real good. There's no damage at all there. I cleaned the inner race of the clutch, and it looks fantastic also. So there's no damage, no uh, sprawling or marring or anything like that. So it looks like it's good to go to put a new clutch back in. I think I was able to get all the particles out. I think I'll probably go ahead and just spray it down with a little brake parts cleaner real quick. Make sure I get all that debris out. And then what I'll do with the new clutch before I put that in, I'm going to remove these cl these clips right here. Um, and the reason I'm going to try the other way is because there's there's two guys already trying it to get some time. But this is what we're seeing that is breaking, not the inner one. Uh, the other guys haven't seen the inner spring broken. But if we remove these clips, which we believe is they're there as part of the uh, installation on a transmission, because that's what this clutch is out of, is a Turbo 400 transmission. And we believe that that helps with the installation. And actually, the, the clutch comes with these covers too when it goes in the transmission. So we disregard these, or discard them. And I'm going to remove these, these clips. We'll run it again and then compare what it looks like in 130 hours, if it lasts that long, um, see if we have any of the same issues. Now obviously, what we look for, every 25 hours I'm changing the fluid on this. So in 25 hours, if I pull that magnetic plug on the cover and I see any debris in there, then I know that this, um, this theory may not be working out. Um, I do have another clutch, so I've got two of these. Um, one is a spare. I think I'll always keep one on hand. That way, if you come back from a flight and it locks up or something on you, you know, it's not that big a deal. I mean, it takes maybe two hours to change the clutch. It's not, it's not a big deal, guys. So if, if you're looking at this as a, as a negative, it's not a negative. This clutch saves the engine um, from a ton of wear. Um, they tried running it with a solid gear without the clutch, and it didn't, didn't work very well. There's tons of vibration. So this clutch, when, they, when the engine surges and then decelerates, instead of dragging down the RPM of the prop with it, it is... Uh, letting it coast. So at, mostly at idle below 4,000, there's a lot of engaging, disengaging going on with this. And that's what really where it's saving the uh, wear on the motor and cutting down on your vibration a ton. So I'll go ahead and get those clips out and then uh, get this back together. Okay, so I removed the clips from this one. Like I said before, there's a, a lip on one side and not the other. That lip goes in first. And so you just got to work it in, get those dogs lined up so that it will go in all the way. Dogs, what I mean is the lobes in the clutch. Turning it sometimes helps. There we go. So a little bit of effort there to get that in. Now in the uh, manual, when you put this back together, it actually says to go ahead and put this... Um, C-clip back in before you put the inner um, race or inner drive gear in. So we'll go ahead and make this 
small again. I'll keep cranking it down. I'll clean that off first. So we can get that to go in there. I'm going to keep cranking down on it. Which way it goes. There we go. Couple more cranks. Okay, there it's in. So I'll start letting it out. There, one side clipped in. Push down on it a little bit. Get the other side to go. There we go. Loosen it up. We're done with that tool. Okay, so the clutch is in there. Okay, with this gear, it's going to go back in. Same thing, it helps to spin it a little bit to try to get it to go in. That might help get it to go in a little bit. Some light taps. Make sure it's flush with the front. And there we go, there's your clutch change. So now I just have to put the gear box back together. This has all been clean, so I can go get the gear box half. And before I put this back together, I'm going to do a thorough cleaning of it, make sure none of those particles are in there. So I pulled this. This is your spacer washer. Then we'll go ahead and pull the drive shaft, or the uh, prop flange shaft out, so I can look at this bearing. Alright, so I'm just looking to see if any of those clutch pieces are in there. see anything. So now just clean the, the uh, case half, get it all good and cleaned out. And you can see right, move that out of the way, see right here is the drain plug and that's a magnet so that's where the particles are, are ending up and that's on the bottom side. So it does have a magnetic drain plug in there and that helps catch those pieces. So you can tell you know, you're checking this every 25 hours at least um, by changing out the, the fluid. And so you can pull that plug and see if you have any of those clips or any, any metal particles from the gears or the uh, clutch. So it's not like this goes a long time without being, being checked thoroughly. So, all right, take a look at this drive shaft now or the output shaft of it. Clean some of the former Loctite residue off. Okay, so we're all clean there. Your spacer bear, or uh, washer, that's to hold the gear off of the case. And then this, you have the uh, brass side showing ring that goes down, so the clutch side faces up drops into the teeth. Yeah. And then the nut will go on. And we'll need to torque that to 150 foot pounds. So that I'll need to figure out a way to hold the prop flange um, tight in order to do that. And then I've got some some high strength thread locker that will go on those threads. So that's what I'll figure out next is a good way to hold this steady while I go ahead and torque it back on, make sure I have a torque wrench that goes that high. And uh, then we'll put that nut back on and then this one will be ready to go back on the airplane. All right, let me see my hand here. I went ahead and sacrificed two holes into my workbench, used the other prop flange as a template. So should be able to take gearbox now, line up these holes. I put a screw back into them. Looking for 150 foot pounds. That's what's set on the torque wrench right now. Oh, there we go. There it is. All right. Clean off the excess Loctite. 
There we have it. So that's ready to go back in the uh, airplane. New clutch. So what I'm going to do next is the other one that I have, and then I'll assemble that back onto the uh, spare motor just so you can see how it goes back together as if it was in my hanger. So I'll get to that next. So the main pain in the butt about this is this O-ring right here. hate to pop open a thing of silicone just for this because it usually will um, all dry out on you. So, okay, so I'm just going to take a little bit, put it up where I want the seam to be. Maybe a little bit on the curves to help hold it in place. Okay, let's see if that works. So that is a good trick. That was suggested by somebody. I can't remember who suggested it, but the silicone does hold that in place really nice. So now we can go ahead and take the front half of the gearbox, and there are locating pins on top. Those can stay on either side of it, so. And a little mallet to tap it in there. there. Easy peasy, right? Okay. Now we just put all these bolts back in. Probably speed this part up because it there's I don't know quite a few of them. And then let me pull the torque spec on those. Nine foot pounds. So I'll come around with a torque wrench when I'm done putting them all in. All right, there you have it, guys. So uh, that's how you replace the clutch on the uh, Apex Skytrax gearbox. Um, it was really pretty simple, as long as you have the right tools. And I'm just going to preach to you for a minute. Don't try to do it without the right tools. Now, making that those holes in my count in my uh, workbench so that I could secure that gearbox down so I could put the proper torque on it. It's worth it to do that. Whatever you want to do is to make a fixture to hold that gearbox still while you put the proper torque on it. It's necessary. You need to be able to do that. You need to have the proper socket. You need to have a proper C-ring uh, removal tool. And that's like 75 bucks. So it's not like a cheapo part, it, but you're going to use it. So um, if you're going to go this route, make sure you get the right parts. There's also a puller tool to remove the gear when you take the gear when you take the gearbox off if you're going to take it off put it on a different engine or whatever um, so you're going to want that that re gear removal tool also so i've got one of those i think i have everything i need now so if i want to go on a long trip and throw this spare clutch in you know if i was in the field how would i do this okay well you need to be able to hold this flange steady when you undo that that uh nut so if i had a a breaker bar and my two inch socket. You know, obviously these are heavy items to take with you on a trip, but if I had them, if I wasn't somewhere that had a pneumatic uh, air tool, what I could do is take this gearbox half off, put the prop back on or leave the prop on, have two guys hold the prop while I use a breaker bar to, to undo that nut. So you could change this clutch in the field is what I'm saying. It's not that big a deal to do that. Um, you probably would need some help, but you know, you shouldn't be out flying super remote by yourself too much. But if you had to, you could change the clutch in the field. But furthermore, when this clutch does go out, it does lock up, but it's in the drive configuration. It's not slipping. When it, when it fails, it fails into a lockup. And you can fly just fine with it locked up. You probably won't even notice that it's locked up until you go to shut down. So my point is, if you did have an issue when you're out in the backcountry or whatever, and the clutch locks up on you, fly into McCall or somewhere where you have access to tools, this is not a big deal to change this out, especially if you're carrying the spare tools with you. So thanks for watching. That's how you change the clutch out. Um, try to get some more content up for you guys when I can. Um, but anyway, subscribe if you liked it. Hit the like button and the notification bell. I'll see you on the next one.
All right, guys, welcome back to the Project Kitfox Garage. Today's video is sponsored by Hemiway Bikes. This is their Zebra model, and this is a pretty cool bike. We picked this one up uh, basically for not designated as a mountain bike, but more all around city riding, hitting trails. Um, with these big fat tires, you can actually take this to the beach, ride in the sand, or you could even ride it in the snow. I mean, these tires are really, you can flip it over and see, they're really wide tires on it. Um, it is a hub motor. It allows you to have five different levels of pedal assist. Um, so you can get assistance while you're pedaling. And as you select from one to five, it gives you more and more assist. Now, level five, it's, it's really easy to pedal this bike with the power being applied to the rear wheel. It also has a th twist throttle. So if you don't want to pedal and you just want to kick back and ride it like a moped, you can do that also. Um, it does have up to uh, 60 mile range, depending on obviously how you utilize it. If you're using the pedal assist, you'll get better range out of it. Um, it does have an internal battery that has a cover on it that locks, so no one's going to steal your battery. It uses a key in order to get the battery out. However, you don't need to take the battery out unless you're going to replace it because it does charge in place. Um, that's kind of cool because you don't have a battery hanging out and rattling. It's all internal. It does make for a large frame, but that's the reason behind that. It has front suspension, so uh, a fork in front with suspension. It has disc brakes front and rear. Um, it has Shimano Altus shifters on it, so good quality shifter. Uh, single sprocket in the front with, uh, let's see, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven gears in the back. And with the pedal assist, you don't really need any other gearing options. Um, this did come with fenders front and rear. I didn't put the front one on because I don't really care for fenders. The rear one was already mounted. And with the rack that it came with, I figured why not leave the fender in place, keeps the rack from getting really dirty. Um, the drawback on it really is the weight. It is fairly heavy, um, but with that weight, you're getting quite a bit of power and really good range. You can get up to 60 miles out of this bike using it in the pedal assist mode. Um, but overall, this bike has is, is really got some cool features. It's got an LCD display up top, tells you, you know, all your trip information, your battery level. It does have a light that you, so you can ride it at night with reflectors, um, brake light in the rear. It's really a cool bike. So if you guys get a chance, you know, check it out in the description below. If you're looking around for an electric bike, electric bikes are the way to go. Once you ride one and see the versatility and how you can get such a better distance out of your ride, um, you're, you're not going to want to go back to one that doesn't have the, the battery power. They really are incredible. Um, so if you get a chance, check it out. And I want to thank Hemiway for sponsoring this video. If you guys are interested in the Zebra Hemingway bike, you can check out this link here for a full review on the Project Kitfox channel.